Hi again, everyone. This video is sponsored by Contribution from Anonymous, and here's her story. Hi, Ollie. This is a combination follow-up from a previous video you made for me. The narcissist flying monkey is a ticking time bomb, and a couple of short narc parent stories. As a follow-up to the video you made for me, I appreciate your guidance to be cautious of any attempts to get pulled back into my family, and I agree that there may be an element of my sister's psyche that would prefer not to deal with the rest of the family on her own. Trust me, I have, I have had many, com many conversations with her over the years questioning why she continues to expose herself to these people. I understand that she believes in commitment to family and will do her best to live that ethic. We had further discussion after I sent you the story and I told her clearly how the mere discussion of the siblings was distressing me and that I have to concentrate and I have to create emotional distance on the issues they bring to protect myself. I express that I will always love and support her, but she'll need but she'll need create her need to create her own effective boundaries with the siblings and I'm staying out of it. No chance I'll ever reconsider. She understood and told me she'd support my position. I suspect that at some point there will be an event bad enough that it causes her to end the relationships. The silver lining is that my sister has a good husband and she leans on him to set limits or push back on others when needed. She respects my wishes and often keeps she respects my wishes to keep details of my life private from others from the others. And I've told her to avoid acting as a go-between. I know my other siblings won't approach me directly. For my part, I'll be wary, but I won't totally sacrifice my relationship with my sister. She raised me a child, a child caring for a baby, <clears throat> and always does the best she can to support and encourage me throughout my life. She's not perfect, but she's the closest thing I've had, I've ever had to a real parent which is amazing when there's only 10 years between us. In my mind, that deserves some loyalty. Keep us in your prayers that it all works out in the end. Thankfully, the worst siblings are the oldest are the oldest ones, so eventually their mortality will solve the problem permanently. Now a couple stories that came to mind after listening to the video. There are no safety nets with the narcissist only traps. My parents made us leave home early usually by 15 or 16, but they never legally made us emancipated minors, so we all went through a weird in-between phase. By the time I reached the age to get out of the house at 16, my father had died, and my mother left for Florida with my stepfather. I finished high school early, so I took some college classes, worked and stayed with my sister, or on my own until I turned 18. As soon as I was 18, I enlisted in the U.S. Army and left shortly thereafter. If I had been emanci if I had been an emancipated minor, I would have enlisted er enlisted earlier. My mother was furious when I enlisted. She called me from Florida and literally screamed at me about the decision, ending with her shrieking, "So tell me what's going to happen when you fail at this?" I told her I'd cross that bridge if it came to pass, but in the meanwhile I was going and intended not to fail. I left for basic training and my mother and sister both knew where I was and how long I'd be there. I had a plan to see them both between training and assignment to my first duty station. I actually had a pretty good time at basic training as we were busy all the time and I was learning a lot of totally new things. In retrospect, all the activity and structure was a good outlet for some of the anger that I had but wasn't aware of at the time. It's also a reflection on my childhood that I wasn't homesick at all. I can remember thinking how strange the other people who were sad and crying about missing home or upset because the drill sergeants were yelling at them. About halfway through basic training, I was called into the senior drill sergeant's office. My mother had called her congressman to complain because I had been in the Army for four weeks and had not written her a letter. So she was sure I had been killed and the Army was covering it up. For viewers that don't have, yeah, you have to like notify your parents, because if your parents call your DI or your 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 recruit, and they will embarrass you. For viewers that don't have 
experience with the U.S. military, there are very formal procedures to ensure notification of next of kin immediately when, when a service member is killed, and my father was a veteran, so I'm sure she knew this. The congressman, of course, sent the message to the base commander, and it trickled down from there. I explained to my drill sergeant that I really didn't need or want to communicate with her, and I just wanted to focus on my training. I think he understood, and he probably dealt with this before. He gave me a three-sentence template of a letter that I had to write out and send to her once a week until I left training. But he told me I had to send the letters to avoid any more problems with the base commander. My mother also insisted on coming to the graduation ceremony and was a total bitch. She was critical and nasty the entire time, even telling me how bad I looked in my uniform. It was so bad that my stepfather actually called her out on it and told her to quit being so hateful, as I was the proudest and happiest he'd ever seen me. That was the one and only time he ever stood up for me. Jump forward in time a year and a half, I was stationed at Camp Casey on the DMZ, the militarized zone between North and South Korea. Shit. That ain't no joke. This was at the start of the first Gulf War, and my unit was on alert since North Korea was making threats and actions, threats of actions on U.S. invasions of Kuwait and Iraq. My mother fell and broke her hip and wanted me to come home and stay with her while she had surgery. Mind you, she had four other kids all in the United States but didn't want to bother any of them since they had real jobs and families. I requested the leave, but it was denied because of the unit's alert status since her injury was not life-threatening. I wouldn't even have requested the fucking leave. I would have rather have dealt with Kim Jong-il. Or was it Kim Il-sung back then? I don't know. It might have even been his old man back then. I kid you not, when when I told her the leave was denied, she went behind my back and called her congressman again. Another message went out from the congressman to my base commander in Korea and trickled down the chain. I was, prom I was, I was a newly promoted sergeant and got called into the colonel's office to be asked if I understood the criticality of the unit alert statics and why I could not go back to the U.S. on leave for my mother's surgery. I told him I was clear from the original denial of the request and I told my mother why I could not come. I apologized to the colonel because of the unnecessary drama my mother caused. I was so embarrassed and angry with her. The commanding general sent a message back to the congressman confirming since my mother's situation was not life-threatening I would remain on duty in Korea due to the unit alert status. My mother was very angry about that response and she brought up the it and brought the issue up for years complaining how I had not come home when she was injured. She she convinced herself that I had influenced my chain of command to deny the request. Yeah, okay. The military military colonel. Eventually I got sick of hearing it and told her that she taught us that she taught us that Work was the most important thing, just like she always said when she used to work as a reason to not attend events when we were kids or complain to us about the, about the pay she forfeited if she did, it did attend something. It's sad to say, but I was happy when my mother finally died. I felt free knowing I had never had to deal with her again. Even though I barely saw her or talked to her in her last years, I did not go to a memorial service and burial, and have not had a single day that I have ever missed her. The downside is that I has, I've had to spend years learning to understand the damage that she did to me and my siblings, and invest mountains of time and effort to try to undo that damage. I think if I had a time machine and one opportunity to use it, I'd go back in time and murder her, save myself and my siblings a lot of misery. Thanks for your ongoing efforts, Ollie. I've enjoyed the bin I've enjoyed bin watching videos since you came back online. <clears throat> you came through the other side, so as miserable as she was. You know, the overall thing with your mother is, you know, the narcissist makes you into a master into a master criminal into the master demon, the master, living living in a volcano, just putting evil deeds to the point where you're able, okay, as a newly promoted 
female sergeant on the DMZ during the Iraq War. Anybody knows what the, the, the militarized zone between North and South Korea? Okay. They stand there basically just staring at each other from both sides of the border ready to freaking kill each other. That's how hostile that DMZ zone is. The conference room between North and South Korea, there is a literal border across the, well, the border goes across the conference room table. Half of the table's on North Korea, half the Korea's the table's on South Korea, and there's basically guys with guns wait, waiting to shoot each other whenever the, the rare occasion they do negotiate. <coughs> Yet you are so manipulative, you are able to convince a military chain of command in a basic, basic as close to a war zone, war conditions as you get, because technically the Korean War never ended. It's only under ceasefire. Technically, that's still an active war, just under ceasefire right now. That shit could start up tomorrow. Yet you're so powerful and so manipulative, you can convince the entire military chain of command right up to your colonel to deny your mother. Now that's powerful. That's powerful. I would wonder who the hell that congressman is calling the DMZ like that and what or what story she must have given him. To call the DMZ and request a transfer for somebody. Stay away from politics, Ali. It's unbelievable. It really is. It's unbelievable. So congratulations on your master manipulation of... Uh, of a, of, a, of a military chain of command in a, in a virtual war zone. The DMZ, the DMZ, for Christ's sakes. That was a good one. So thank you for your contribution. Thank you again for your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover or a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to have a private video, a Skype, a Skype chat, or a phone call, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email links in the description box. I'll have a video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.